Well, first of all, um, it's it you know it's about an it's about an idea and working up your idea, talking you know talking to people, researching obviously you know all the things that I'm acutely aware that young people are capable of doing, um, and probably do that really well. What I'd suggest after that is going to a site called business.gov.au. Now, normally, I would say, you know, um, government business sites are going to be a huge disappointment because they're going to be government and they're not going to handle things quite. But there are two sites. Um, one's an app um, and one's a site that I would really suggest. Now, business.gov.au is put together in a way that is helps you um, work through starting up a business. So it's you know, the questions you have to ask. You know, what's your structure of your business going to be? Is it going to be a company? Is it going to be a sole trader? Is it going to be a partnership? What does that mean? What is, you know, what does your business case look like? Here's some examples to what a business case might look like. Why do you need a business case? Well, your business case is fund fundamentally becomes your business plan. And like anything, not a good idea to start anything without uh, without a plan, and that will also give you some info, some info on where you might, how much capital you might need to get up and running. You know, in some businesses, it's very little because it's something you can start individually. Might be a service, might be might be an app, might be an IT product. Um, but if you're looking at something, say in the restaurant space or coffee shops or whatever, there's going to be capital investment that will be required. So you need to work that into the into the space. But this site runs through all of those things and gives you information on what a business case and a business plan might look like, you know, what business structures look like, the pros and cons um, of um, of all of them. Um, it then will tell you if there's any business licences um, you might need, then tells you about, you know, what you need to know about employing people if you want to employ people uh, and so on. So it runs you know, sequentially, sequentially through a range of the things that you um, you might need or you do need to know if you're starting a business in a pretty simple sort of way. The other one is, um, again, something I wouldn't have ever believed I would have recommended, but I am, and that's the ATO app. So, you know, in the App Store, go to the Australian Taxation Office, the ATO app. Now, in the ATO app, it's really structured for small businesses, you know, that could be anything from, you know, a, a subcontractor, a carpenter, a plumber, or an IT person, or whatever, who's just running an individual business through to, you know, smaller businesses that actually employ. It's got some great tools, even things like, which I really love, is a capacity to take a photo of a um, of an invoice or a receipt which goes straight into your um, into your tax records. So some of the great dilemmas of starting a business, things like, you know, keeping all those receipts because they're all tax deductible, where you put them, what does a BAS statement look like, all of those sort of things. Are, is, it's all there and it's all pretty simple. So starting up a, a business, I'd suggest business.gov.au and the ATO um, app as a, as a good starting point and of course, it's all free. Now, can I go on to one other thing, and that's access to capital. Now, for lots of small business startups, they don't need a lot. You know, if you don't need, as I was talking about before, you know, the coffee machine or whatever, you know, you can you could start off quite quite inexpensively. Now, a number of some of the banks are now providing small loans to you know under fifty thousand to small business uh, startups uh, without bricks and mortar. The great dilemma in small business is banks um, really require you to have, you know, a house or bricks and mortar, something they can secure the loan against, which makes it really difficult for lots of small business startups. But if you only need under, say, under 50,000, the banks are, are there, as are the new fintechs. The online lenders will will lend without bricks and mortar. If you need more than a couple of hundred thousand, say you're buying a coffee shop or whatever, the challenges become quite significantly higher. And I won't suggest for a moment if you don't have a house or access to uh, the bank of mum and dad or something to underwrite your loan, you'll um it's a, it's it's actually um quite a struggle. 
So, um, but there's a range of things you can do in terms of, you know, leasing equipment, um, you know, the, um, in terms of, you know, rent and, and so on. There's, there's ways you can minimize the, um, upfront costs, but I tell you what, it means you're going to have to be very careful with your cash flow because it really will mean you'll be cash strapped right from the beginning. And that's a bad way to go. But look, um, my experience is running your own business is fantastic. Um, it's very fulfilling. Um, whether you decide to stay smallish or you, you grow and, you know, um, you become the next Alessian or whatever, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really, you know, a great way to operate, but don't do it if you're thinking working for yourself is a way to have a, a calmer lifestyle or work less hours. Not true. You'll work more hours and it'll be less calm, but it'll also be very fulfilling.